And here we are on the last section of this mini series about how to use Surfer to represent geochemical data. And not only to represent, but also to interpret some of these geochemical signatures that we are getting. Uh, for this last part, which will be how to present your data in a way that anybody will understand. And I'm going to be introducing you to a method that I have developed called the quartile methods. And we will be using our common table, Excel table. Again, as always, you can download this data set from this site. And we're going to go directly to the section of quartiles because I already have several videos explaining how to get the different parameters. And the objective of all the processing is to get as many equations, as many formulas that will represent the potential mineralization in our target. In this case, for this data set, we have two types of mineralization. We have a gold mineralization and a rare earth element mineralization. And we are going to explain only one, the gold, just for time constraint. So let's jump directly to quartiles. Here, I just put the different parameters that we use, that we obtain during the processing of this data for gold. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven parameters, and of course, the value of gold. But as you can see, the coefficient, each coefficient varies extremely by the magnitude. Sometimes it's millions, sometimes it's 0 0.1. So uh, if you want to represent all this in a map, it would be extremely complex to read. You're going to need to have different scales, etc. So the quartile method, and what is a quartile? Quartile is when you have your population of data ordered from the smaller one to the big one. You divide that population in quarter, in 25%. And each one of them is a quartile. So 0 to 25 is the first quartile, 25 to 50, second quartile. 50 to 75 is the third quartile, and above 75 is the fourth quartile. So that way we can convert all these numbers into quartiles, okay? But then the next step on this processing is, I said that if this data, for example, is above the third quartile, I will put a number five. If it is above this, second quartile, I will put a number of four. And if it is below, I will put a number of three. So this is the formula here. Okay. So as you can see, I converted all these different range of numbers into a column that only have values of three, four, or five. And again, the formula, as you can see up here, is if the original value is bigger than the third quartile, then I will put a number five. If it is bigger than the second quartile, we'll put a number four. And then if not, it's a number three. And the quartiles, let me go down here for a second. This is where you determine the quartiles. And the formula of the quartile is very simple. So quartiles is, you select, you write quartile of all the data, comma, and the quartile that you're interested in, in this case, is three, and the lower one is two. So now we have all our data converted into values of three to five. The next series of columns is this is exactly the same as the, this group here. The only thing is that I eliminated the formulas. I just copy and paste this as numbers eliminated the form because sometimes Excel, when working with table that has formulas embedded from previous formula, it sometimes make mistakes. So it's easier just to grab all your, all your data, okay? You just copy it 
and you just paste it as values. That way, you see, we have eliminated the formula. These are just numbers. Now, what does this mean? For example, this first sample where every single value is three. That means that this sample for all the components that we are exploring always has very low probabilities of having mineralization because the value is three. Now, if I had a sample that all these parameters will be five, that will mean that this sample is very, very probable a gold target because we have its score above the third quartile for all the possible combination of, of formulas that we are exploring. So what would, could be the maximum value for a sample that have five on all these things? It would be 40 because we have eight elements, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the way I create my quartile map is as follows. I say the sum of all these values multiplied by 100 and divided by 40. 40 because I have eight columns and the maximum value for column is five. So five by eight is 40. So this column here, the gold quartile, is telling me directly in percentage, what is the percentage or the probability that this sample will be mineralized. So we have been, with this method, we are able to convert, I don't know, 50 maps, 50 columns of data into just one single layer, expressed in probabilities from zero to 100, because it's giving you the probability of each point to contain or not mineralization. So once again, very simple, you convert all your data to quartiles and you use a formula that said that if the quartile is bigger than the third quartile, you would put the value of five. If it's more than the second quartile, you would put the value of four. And if it is less, you would put the value of three. These values are subjective. You can put whatever value you want because anyway, at the end, what we're gonna do is we wanna add all those values and divide it by the amount, the maximum amount of value that we can get if everything here was five, which would be 40. So if we had a case of five, 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 we will have 40 by 100 divided by 40 equal 100. This is the column that we're gonna use in our map. So you can see we're gonna be representing a map of the probabilities of each of these sample to be in a mineralized zone. So we create our surfer table, which the last one would be lo looking something like this, the east, northern elevation, the geology, erosional level, a typical samples, the quartile for rare element and the quartile for goals. And now we're gonna go to surfer and we're gonna represent our quartile of gold. So here we are back to our surfer map as we left it last time. Just to make it this clear, I'm gonna deselect the elevation. So the first step will be to create the biogram of our gold quartiles. So, so we will do our biogram, the biogram, our data set, and we select the gold quartile data. We have our line here, probably a straight line will work well. I just do my usually formatting. Make this, put the, whatever. Yeah, this probably gonna be a good line, but as always, let's see if Surfer can do a better line. No, this is not one of those cases. So I will leave it like that. I can manually change a little bit here. Like I could make the slope a little bit bigger. Uh, too big, 25, uh, 23. Yeah, 
that will be much better. So using my cutting application from Windows, I will cut this thing, copy, paste it here. And I have my and it's ought to be one an angle zero. Now, now that I have my gold quartile, I'm gonna do the greeting of the data and I will use the inverse descent because as you remember, we have faults. So greet, greet data, inverse distance, we use our table, we use the gold quartile, click next. The anisotropy, as I say, is one zero. That doesn't change. Default, we open our fault file. And we can go to the end and we call these gold quartiles. I'm going to put another directory here. Gold quartile. Okay. And I will have a new map, a contour map. So I say close, say yes, I will eliminate this. So this is our map of gold quartiles. And again, this map is a representation in percentage of what is the potential of each sample to be part or not of the gold mineralization. So what we should do, very easy, is to go to here to levels. We change this to advanced. We click on edit levels and we're gonna leave only, we have up to 90. So let's say we're gonna leave 75, 80 and 85%. So for that, we just, we can delete, 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 but we can just write 75, 80 and 85 and then we delete the rest. We select all the lines as three lines. And for the colors, we want the labels. Yes, let's put the labels. For the colors, uh, I use a standard uh, patterns that are recommended by the art industry to be used in data that are contiguous. So I would put these three files in my Mendeley. So if people want to download them, they can download them. Go for my lower level file and I would put my level one, my second level file, level two, and for my third level file level three and I will press OK and I will press OK again. And then of course I need to fill the counters and provide a scale. So here is our map. This is the map that anybody will understand because we're just saying the possibility in percentage of these areas here to contain a gold deposit. Okay, you can even be more restrictive. You can say that you want just to eliminate the 75. Okay, and this is the map that you will present to your bosses. And again, we can just copy this map, go back to our base map, paste, drag in up here, and this is the map. Now, as you can see, this area here, this area here are at least partially covered by an erosional zone. So this, and this one here is completely covered because the anomaly has been already eroded. It may be that this just outcropping. So take a look. This one here is between two little uh, erosional targets, but 
This one here is very good. This one here is close to an erosion, but it's not touched by an erosion. So there are several points. And remember, these are 80% probability that you have a gold deposit. So this is the way of representing multiple maps in just one map, the quartile map or the quantic map for geochemistry. I hope that it will be very useful for you. And with this, we finish our series in Surfer. In this series, we started by, you know, making a base map, uh, determine the linear meta-analysis, partial linear meta-analysis, the erosional level, and we finalize it with representing the geochemical data in your map. Again, the quartal method is the perfect way of representing multiple anomalies in just one map that represent the probability that this point here has 85% probability to be a gold deposit. Once again, thank you very much for attending. and uh, I will see you in the next Golden Droplets episode. Have a great day. <laughs>